So I found out that feeding live baby brine shrimp is the key to really boosting the growth of your fish fry. But there's so many methods for hatching brine shrimp or making a DIY hatchery. Which one should you use? Keep watching as I break it down into easy bulletproof steps for you to follow along. Hi, how are you doing? I'm a gamer's wife here with practical and proven fish care tips for busy aquarists like you. And I have to admit, I stayed away from baby brine shrimp the first time around when I was raising my Cory catfish fry because I figured, well, prepared and frozen foods are less of a hassle, right? The problem is it took forever for the fry to grow up, almost nine months to a year before I felt like they reached a sellable size. Now, when I interviewed veteran breeder Larry Brown on how to grow fish fry big and fast, he said baby brine shrimp all the way. Freshly hatched shrimp still have their yolk sacs, which is super nutritious for babies, and their jerky swimming motions really trigger that feeding instinct for the fry. Plus, Dean, who breeds fish for aquarium co-op, said that he feeds baby brine shrimp to the parents because they'll breed more readily if they think there's an abundant supply available for their babies to eat. The problem is that I heard hatching baby brine shrimp is kind of messy, and I was afraid it would take too much time and be unsustainable in the long run. Plus, I wasn't sure which DIY hatching method would be the easiest and cleanest to use, so I went ahead and ordered the Brine Shrimp Hatchery Kit from San Francisco Bay Brand, which is basically a nice stand that holds the bottle upside down and allows you to drain brine shrimp from the bottom without collecting most of the eggshells. For the air supply, you'll need your air pump, airline tubing, and an optional check valve and air valve. Next, you'll want a two liter soda or water bottle. Companies are starting to reduce the amount of plastic in bottles, so pick the strongest, thickest bottle you can so it won't easily crush. For the baby brine shrimp eggs, the kit comes with three packets to start you off, but you can buy more from brineshrimpdirect.com. And finally, you'll want aquarium salt, baking soda or Epsom salt to raise the pH, a old school desk lamp that takes incandescent or halogen bulbs, and then a thermometer. I like the cheap digital ones that come with a probe. How to install the stand. First, you'll need to empty out your two liter bottle. Now, my honey grommies were first time inexperienced parents, so I actually only ended up with two fry. So I decided to buy a one liter bottle of carbonated water instead, which also fit the hatchery base. Cut off the bottom of the bottle right where it starts to curve and then screw the bottle into the black hatchery base. You'll really want to crank it down so that water doesn't leak out, hence the need for a strong bottle. Insert the thermometer all the way to the bottom of the bottle. I have a digital probe, so I just tape the wire on the outside of the bottle so it wouldn't fall out. Connect the airline tubing from the bottom of the hatchery to the air pump. To prevent any water from damaging the pump during a power outage, either connect a check valve in between or place the pump higher than the top of the hatchery. As an optional step, some people like to connect an air valve to the hatchery so they can easily turn on or off the air and prevent the brine shrimp from flowing out. But if you don't have one, you can just use a clothespin to pinch the tubing shut. As for how to hatch the brine shrimp, for some reason, there's like a bazillion recipes out there, all slightly different. So I researched three methods. Here's what I learned. First, we're gonna fill the bottle halfway with warm tap water at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. No need to dechlorinate it. For the two liter bottle, I measured out exactly one liter of water and then marked it with a Sharpie on the outside. Make sure the airline tubing is attached to the hatchery and is either closed off completely or has air actively running through it. Otherwise, the water will spill out from the bottom of the hatchery when you pour it in, like I did. Turn on the air pump if you haven't already and let the water bubble for a few minutes. If the bottle starts leaking, try to screw it in even more tightly, maybe using a rubbery jar opener pad. If it's still leaking, you may have a bad bottle with weak plastic like I did, so get another bottle. Add one and two thirds to two tablespoons of aquarium salt. And then to raise your pH to about 8.0 to 8.5, you'll wanna add about a quarter teaspoon of baking soda or a half teaspoon of Epsom salt. Then add in one half to one teaspoon of baby brine shrimp eggs. If you add too many eggs, your hatch rate won't be as good. Turn on the dust lamp and shine it at the top of the open bottle. You wanna aim for a temperature of 80 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature is cooler, that's okay. The eggs will just take a little longer to hatch, like more like 36 hours. But if it's too hot, like 85 degrees Fahrenheit and higher, then you'll kill the baby brine shrimp. So always better to go slightly cooler. 
Store the rest of the brine shrimp eggs in the fridge for up to three to four weeks, or in the freezer for longer periods. Keep the eggs dry and don't let them ever warm up to room temperature. Set a timer. In the first four to six hours, you'll notice there's a ring of eggs that are stuck above the water line, so knock them down by swirling the water or using a spoon. You'll want to keep the air pump and the lamp turned on the whole time. After 24 hours, it's time to collect them. Pro tip, if you need smaller sized shrimp for your new fry, you can collect them earlier at the 18 hour mark. Also, if you've been using eggs that have been in the freezer for a while, it may take longer to hatch, like up to 36 hours. Close the air valve or pinch the airline tubing shut with a clothespin and turn off the air. This will prevent the liquid from flowing out of the hatchery. Aim your lamp at the bottom of the bottle and then turn off any nearby lights. This will cause the shrimp to swim towards the bottom, leaving all the empty shells floating at the top. After 10 minutes, get a shallow dish to collect the shrimp. Open the air valve or clothespin and let the brine shrimp flow out until the liquid turns clear. If the liquid isn't flowing out, try placing your collection dish lower than the bottom of the hatchery. I personally don't rinse out the brine shrimp because, you know, a little bit of aquarium salt in a large grow out tank probably won't harm anything. And Cory from Aquarium Co-op hasn't had any issues in his fish room after 10 plus years. If you don't end up feeding all of the baby brine shrimp, place the collection dish with the brine shrimp solution in the fridge to slow down their metabolism and keep them alive for about two days. Take apart the hatchery and scrub it clean with hot water between uses. Don't reuse the brine shrimp water. Ew. If the hatchery is starting to get dirty or your hatch rates are decreasing, use some diluted bleach to clean it out. Easy peasy. After my two honey garami fries survived their first two weeks on infusoria, now they've glutted themselves on shrimp and are so big and fat. Like, I can't believe how fast they've grown. Now that I'm a brine shrimp hatching queen, would I buy this kit again? Well, the pros are it's super easy to clean. I like that I can drain the baby brine shrimp directly from the bottom and minimize any spilling, aka avoiding rotting baby brine shrimp on my kitchen counter. Plus, it's really easy to take apart and maintenance. The cons are the hatchery costs $15, but that's not really a con for me because A, I'm not great at building things, and B, if I were to DIY a bottom draining hatchery, I'd have to start from scratch and buy all the parts and tools and it'd probably end up costing about the same amount, if not more. By the way, Gemco also makes a really cool hatchery stand for about the same cost, which you can see featured in Inglorious Betta's video, linked in the description. If you're looking for a fun, easy breeding project, don't forget to check out the short playlist I've put together over here for you, as well as subscribe to our community. Don't forget to take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.